Why can some benders use their mastery with their mind? Is power hereditary? Did you know that some benders are enhanced with different seasons? After much searching in the series, comics, books, canon game guides to the Avatar Bible itself, I think I am ready to help you answer these questions in this video, putting together a complete and canonical guide to all the mysteries behind the bending in Avatar, that although it seems that we know them, at the moment we only know the tip of the iceberg. Come with me to clean up the knowledge we have on this topic, and to make clear the how and why of the elementary domain. This is Appa Comics. Before I start with what I will share with you in the video, I want to clarify that it will mostly remain within the Avatar canon. For those unfamiliar with the term canon, in simple terms it refers to what is real in the story, it is not an invention or a theory. Although there are some issues that we can theorize, such as the possibility that all the elements are related or are part of the same energy bending, but I will talk about this later. On the other hand, this isn't an Easter Eggs video about each element, like what martial art each represents or how they were created. It's more focused on how the item itself works, how it is maximized, where it comes from, etc. If you're okay with that and feel like giving the video a like, you can continue watching. If you don't agree, you can leave. We need to leave now. Or well, if you don't like it, you can still watch it. Why don't you take another few minutes? The origin of mastery of the elements dates back to when humans lived on lion turtles. Legend has it that the first masters to control the elements were animals and spirits, mole badgers for the earth, flying bison for the air, dragons for fire and, in the case of water control, the spirits of the moon and the ocean. During that time, the lion turtles temporarily granted mastery of an element to those who lived above them to defend themselves on their travels, but upon returning, this power had to be returned. Juan, the first avatar, was the first to break this rule and, upon being exiled for it, requested to retain the power of firebending in order to survive. From this event, other humans began to do the same, becoming permanent carriers of an element. Over time, the offspring of these benders began to be born with the ability to manipulate said element without having to ask a lion turtle. Thus was born what we know as benders. All benders are born with innate elemental abilities and must undergo training to master them. They can only control a single element but with enough practice, they can specialize to take this mastery to the maximum. For example, some earthbenders can bend metal, and some waterbenders can heal. It should be noted that the number of benders is a small percentage of the population, I would say in my opinion around 5-10% to of the total number of people, being quite generous. Items are often used for fighting but also have practical purposes such as construction, agriculture, and industry. The type of element a person is born with depends largely on the nation they come from, and those with parents from different nations could be born with any of their abilities. Following the harmonic convergence of the Age of Korra, numerous non-benders suddenly gained the ability to airbend, regardless of their cultural background. The mastery of an element is based on the manipulation of the energy that exists in all things. The expansion of this domain depends on both the physical and spiritual parts, as well as external factors. From the physical point of view, a teacher will increase his power as he improves in his movements, postures, coordination and strength. Furthermore, physical condition is decisive, since the use of this power can generate fatigue. Other aspects that affect the mastery of an element are breathing, concentration, knowledge of techniques and the practice itself. In the spiritual realm, a greater spiritual connection significantly expands power. This is where the chakras come into play. To facilitate the flow of energy, the emotions to enhance or diminish their power, and mental clarity. Depending on the element, the amount of emotions involved has an effect on its control. For example, anger amplifies its power in most cases. However, there are exceptions, such as a fire completely free of any emotion, which produces more intense flames, like Azulas, and also lightning. In relation to the chakras, we were mentioned in the legend of Aang that opening them facilitates the flow of energy, preventing it from stagnating and allowing it to be distributed more efficiently. I have created a whole video talking about the chakras that you can see when you finish this one so as not to make it too long. Sorry, 
This video is only on my Spanish channel at the moment, but let me know in the comments if you would like me to translate it into English. In addition, mental clarity strongly affects an element since it goes hand in hand with emotions. Finally, external factors also affect the mastery of controls, since for example waterbenders are stronger at night and firebenders during the day. Waterbending is even more powerful on a full moon, and firebending with Sozin's Comet. Just as some phenomena increase the abilities of the masters, others decrease or nullify them, the case of, for example, fire and water being very clear, during the night a waterbender is stronger and a firebender is weaker and this happens the same as the reverse, even reaching extreme cases such as the complete cancellation of fire during solar eclipses. Here I enter for a few seconds in theory but it is possible that a lunar eclipse annuls the waterbenders and with respect to earth and airbending, according to the Avatar Bible and a short uploaded on the official YouTube account, they tell us that the earthbenders are more powerful in places where there are faults, say tectonic plate junctions. and airbenders are more powerful during natural phenomena such as storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, etc. They also tell us that a firebender is weaker in the rain, and much weaker underwater. In addition to this, all benders are influenced by the seasons, increasing their abilities according to the time of year, corresponding as follows, summer for firebenders, winter for waterbenders, spring for earthbenders, and autumn for airbenders. Entering the theory again, we have not yet seen at any time that astronomical phenomena increase or decrease the power of air and earth benders, but being in a universe where the key to everything is balance, it is very likely that it is at opposite times to those already mentioned. Let me explain. During the day of the black sun, the firebenders lost their powers, the waterbenders did not get stronger, but coincidentally that same day, Bumi reconquered an entire city in a few minutes. Could it be that solar eclipses are a kind of Sozin Comet for earthbending? Leave me your opinion in the comments. There are some forms of mastery of an element that are so specialized that only a few masters can perform them. Although they are not innate abilities, meaning that someone has chosen to do them, they are extremely difficult to control and are sub-controls. Now I know what you're thinking, most of the characters we saw with a sub-bending mastered it in a short time, but this is due to time and script issues. Let's not forget that Toph was perhaps the best earthbender in the world at that time, and we did not have 300 chapters to see how after years she discovered metal bending, so some processes had to be accelerated. That is to say, we had perhaps the most prestigious masters of the Avatar world on screen, so for us it may have become something very common, but in books such as Avatar Legends or the creation of the series, they explain to us that only one a tiny percentage of benders can master a subbending. Furthermore, during the course of the last airbender until the Legend of Korra, schools of benders were formed who already mastered a subcontrol to be able to teach it to others, and this makes everything much easier for those who want to learn it, because they have a Without going too far, if it still bothers you that a master learns a subcontrol very quickly, how did Sakao learn to be a great swordsman in one afternoon? Or well in a couple of days if you want. Script people, script. There is no exact guide on subbending anywhere. Many of these, or techniques that could be considered subcontrols, have no concrete explanation. However, if we take all the characters we've seen with these unique abilities, we can define some key points for mastering a subbending. First of all, a decent mastery of your base element, and why not say a great mastery? We've seen how Katara was able to learn healing without being a superbender. On the other hand, genetics also play an important role. In comics like The Search, Azulin searches a village far away from Ursa to marry her to Ozai, since she was the granddaughter of Avatar Roku and carried the blood of a powerful firebender, even though she was not a firebender. This resulted in Zuko and Azula, two of the three masters who were able to create fire of another color, blue and multicolored. And yes, this is not a sub-ending, but it is a unique ability resulting from lineage. Another example is Noatak and Tarlok, two bloodbenders, sons of who? From a very powerful bloodbender, 
The same with Toph's daughters, excellent metal benders. Whether we like it or not, genetics favors in this case, although it is not decisive. And going into theories for a few seconds, many people think that Bolin is a lava bender as he is the son of a firebender and an earthbender. This is not confirmed, and I am not saying it is so, but if we go back to the facts, it may have something to do with it. Another point is spirituality in its domain. I am not referring to the power of traveling to the spirit world, but to how a master can materialize his control by manipulating the energy that is around him, the one that Guru Puffik mentions, the one that is in everything and that is connected with all. Through better management of this energy, it is more possible to open up to possibilities, understand that everything is one thing and manipulate it in a better way. A clear example of this is combustion control, lightning and redirection. Iroh explains that to create lightning, you have to separate the energy that is everywhere into yin and yang, breaking the natural balance. To try to restore this balance, the energy comes together creating lightning, the bender being only the channel that guides it. But how could a teacher guide her if he has these channels blocked? The answer is that he can't. And how are these channels uncovered? Working on your spiritual part, accepting fears, forgiving ourselves and stopping lying to ourselves. Zuko is in the middle of a very big internal conflict, so, no matter how much she tries to follow what her uncle tells her step by step, she ends up creating an explosion in her face. On the other hand, when Iroh explains the redirection, he comments that the energy must be directed to the Si Chi, located in the stomach, being one of the seven chakras. And what a combustion master does is something similar, making the energy flow from his stomach to his sixth chakra, concentrating it at a point that allows it to come out, located in the tattoo on his forehead. The latest example is Toph, who during Guru Puthik's explanation of the sixth chakra, discovered metal bending. In a scene he explains to us how everything is one thing and accepting and understanding this opens the doors to other possibilities. Closing the topic of the chakras, we are left with perhaps the greatest intrigue so far regarding the control of the elements, and that is the ability to manipulate an element with the mind. We saw this on several occasions, but perhaps the most memorable were with Yak Wan, who could do blood bending with his mind, Ming Hua, who, despite not having arms, could do water bending by creating water arms and using them as part of his body to do other techniques. Bumi during the day of the black sun, and perhaps we could include combustion man and ply. At no point did they explain this to us, but in my personal opinion, and obviously I could be wrong, in fact, I would like to know what you think in the comments, it has to do with what was explained above. A person with an excellent command of his internal energy can largely ignore the movements to control an element, with postures and techniques being a way for the energy to flow more easily through the body. What am I basing it on? Well, first of all, as explained above, but also, when Iroh guides Zuko so that he can do the lightning redirection, he comments that if the energy is directed in the flow of his body, the lightning will follow it. And he says exactly this, what you want to do is create a path with your fingertips pointing up, toward your shoulder, and then toward your stomach. With just the movement of the fingers of one hand they can redirect lightning, so moving simply serves that purpose, to direct this energy where it is wanted. In conclusion, with great mental mastery, a master could do this same thing with just his thoughts without the need for the use of his body. The last point to discuss in this video is the energy bending, from my point of view, it is the original element that encompasses the four elements, being involved in all the other controls, both its positive and negative parts. The only big question I have left is why on the statue on Aang's memorial island there is a triple Aang and Yang symbol. Although I searched for its meaning, I didn't find anything interesting that I can contribute here, so I would love your opinion. If one is Aang and another is Yang, what is this third part? Spirit? Balance? Energy itself? Leave it to me in the comments. I hope you liked the video and as I imagine you already gave it the like at the beginning of the video, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you didn't like it, be careful because I know who you are, Momo told me. Who told you that? It was you! You ratted me out! We'll see you next week with more videos.
Goodbye.